This is a plant that I got from my garden by having a cutting. It's a fern. If I take a leaf off of fern, you can see that it's got the same pattern all the way up. And if I take off one of these side branches, the side branch looks just like the original fern. And if I were to take off a little side branch, and I can't really do this without tweezers, if I were to let this grow, this side branch, and I've taken off several, let me just get it down to that one. That's a smaller version of that, which is a smaller version of that. And if this were to grow out, eventually it would look like this. So this is an example of something which looks the same on different scales of length. You start off small, you replicate it on another branch, and then you replicate it and you've got a, a branch of a, a fern. This idea of things replicating on different length scales occurs elsewhere in physics. For example, well, not in nature. Uh, for example, a bolt of lightning does not come down in a straight line. It branches, and the side branches branch, and the side branches then branch into other bits. And it comes down almost as a cascade. Or a river flowing down into the, a delta, such as in, in Bangladesh. You, you, you have the river coming down, and then it splits into others little bits and other little bits and other little bits out into the delta. So you have not just one river coming down into the delta, but it seems to break up into tributaries and spread out. We've got an experiment, a demonstration of a flow of a viscous liquid uh, into a cell, and into this viscous liquid we pour coloured water, and it, that goes into a shape which is neither uh, branch, it seems to branch and branch and branch, as an example of physics. And this is called the heli Shaw cell. So shall we, well, have you got it all ready, George? But I find the physics of this fascinating because here you have viscous liquid, and it, it's behaving not the way you'd expect. George is going to squirt in some glycerol, which is a very viscous liquid, between these two parallel plates held apart by spaces in the corner. So squeeze it in, George, and make a nice circular. And it's now got a circle up to about there of glycerol, which is the background fluid. Now, George is going to squirt in a little bit of this coloured water, and that's going to push the glycerol further out, but it will also try and either make a little circular pattern in the middle or something else, and it's the something else we're looking for. Take it out, I'll leave it. All of a sudden it's branched, rather like the fern, it's gone into little patterns, little, little, I don't know what to call them, they're like fronds, and then they break into little two bits at the end. This bit that's growing at the end is probably more diffusion-like, but this looks like a, a petals or leaves of a, a plant. This is not one-dimensional, this is not lines coming out, nor is it two-dimensional, it's not filling this as a circle, it's coming out in the radial direction and then it's breaking apart and breaking apart and breaking apart. Now it's diffusing out, but before it did all that, it was neither one-dimensional nor two-dimensional. It wasn't a filled circle, nor was it little spikes coming out. It had some other quality, rather like the fern, of not filling the two-dimensional space completely, but leaving lots of gaps in between. And whenever that happens, when something is neither one-dimensional nor two-dimensional, you have to imagine that it's a different sort of object, something which has a dimension between one and two. That is, it's neither an area nor a line, but some other structure in between. And those things, we have, say, have a fractal dimension. It's an, a fractional number lying between 1 and 2. Well, not fractional, but some number like 1.58359, whatever. And that characterises what this object looks like. This is called the fractal dimension, and people study fractals in physics as objects in their own right, trying to work out what the fractal dimension of a, oh, a granular gas is or other such systems. And this is a different branch of physics from the one that is normally met. There's something called dust bunnies in America. If you go under the bed and your kid has not cleaned the lino, there are little bits of dust making a sort of three-dimensional structure with huge gaps in between. And these gaps in between allow air to flow through it. And it is not one-dimensional. Well, there's the sort of lines, but it doesn't actually occupy two dimensions, but it fills the volume. But somehow it fills the volume, leaving huge amounts of space. There is a, a material called aerogel or vicor, 
an, an aerogel fills the space just like dust bunnies. And when you put superfluid helium through that, it changes all the properties of helium because it imposes a different sort of geometric structure on the superfluid helium. And it gives new properties to it, as discovered by Moses Chan.